As we dive headfirst into Volume 43, it starts off with a bang from the fight between Luffy and Lucci, and it also ends with a bang with Chopper, Hulk Chopper. One Piece, Chapter 410, Super Size Nami, I think. <laughs> well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim here to bring you another review on the awesome and adventure-filled and now starting our 43rd volume tale of One Piece. Now, of course, the last chapter left us uh, kind of hanging at the end of the volume where Luffy and uh, Rob Lucci were kind of starting to get into it. Of course, Nami and Khalifa, their battle is in the midst and raging on. We know that Zoro, of course, is uh, handcuffed with a sea prism uh, handcuffs uh, to, uh, to the Sniper King, and they're being chased around uh, by Kaku uh, in his giraffe form, as well as Jabra in his wolf form. We know that... Uh, that <laughs> Frankie has been inadvertently just completely laid out um, <laughs> by by Chopper, who took his third Rumble Ball and has now just turned into this crazed freaking like Yeti, like Bigfoot wildebeest on crack, right? So that's how the chapter and the, the volume left off for us. And of course, here we go, diving headfirst into this one. And a couple people pointed out to me, and I didn't notice this. Uh, well, I did notice it after, obviously, after it was pointed out. But that uh, there's, I guess there's only a couple of volume covers that do not actually have Luffy on the cover of them. Volume 42 being the one we just got through uh, is obviously one of them. I do love the artwork on this one, though, as we have a bunch of people in just crazy-ass poses. You've got Chopper just looking, like, huge and hellish in the background. You've got Sanji, looks like he's back up on his feet. Uh, obviously, that that's a good thing. You've got Sniper King looking all cool. And honestly, I think he looks cool with the uh, the helmet and the, um, you know, just the mask and everything like that. I think he looks like this cool kind of ancient tiki warrior, you know. And then, of course, you got Zoro coming, charging in there, just looking like a badass. And then Luffy doing some funny shit with his mouth. Anyway, this chapter, though, it's funny because the actual chapter name is Super Size Nami, uh, but really you only see Nami and, and Khalifa in their battle for the last few pages of the chapter. The primary focus, I guess you would say, of this chapter, when you get right into it, is Luffy and Rob Lucci fighting. And what I really enjoyed about this is that I understand that now Luffy um, is not confused about Robin anymore, whether she's quit or she's left them or whatever, and he knows that he's got to save her, so he has that much more strength and adrenaline, it seems like, because there's a, a, a person that he loves that he cares for on the line. However, when Luffy and Rob Lucci met prior, you know, 30, 40 chapters ago, I mean, Luffy got his ass handed to him, and nobody could even seem to get in a glancing blow on any of these CP9 members. Now, they're dropping left and right, and I understand that it's supposed to be like, okay, now we're focused and we're an unstoppable group when we have something to fight for, right? Um, but, you know, it's it's amazing to see the difference in just, just that few, few period of uh, chapters, that, that short period of time. Because honestly, Luffy is whooping Rob Lucci's ass all over the place. Now don't get me wrong, it isn't like, it isn't, it's a back and forth affair. They're hitting each other, they're attacking each other. But I mean, Luffy straight up like smashes him into the ground, puts him into a wall. Um, you know, I mean, he obviously takes some, you know, several blows from Rob Lucci as well. You know, a, a solid Tempest kick. But he's not doing that shave shit, that paper art shit, you know, and then finger pistol and you're down. And, and that's what I didn't like about the first encounter, um, if I obviously didn't make that, you know, clear enough at the time. I felt like it was so skewed and one-sided, and we know that, of course, Luffy now has sort of powered up since then, and now he's able to kind of go into his uh, into his gear two and, and gear third mode, or gear second and gear third, however you want to say it, it makes no difference to me. But anyway, um, so the first probably half of the chapter is all just this great, I mean, and it's wonderfully drawn too, Oda has come so far as far as, uh, you know, on the art end of things, just the conveyance of motion, and just kind of looking, you know, grizzled, and, and like you've been punched, and kicked, and beaten, you know, so, uh, very cool stuff over there, but basically what winds up happening is that uh, the bottom line is, is that Luffy is of course trying to get past Rob Lucci to get through that door, uh, in the hopes of going and catching up to and rescuing Nico Robin. Lucci's like, he's a cold-blooded killer, and he's like, I'm not going to let that happen. Don't think you're getting past me. And there's one point where Luffy even nails Rob Lucci, and then goes and, and winds up trying to get past him and just run for the door and use his speed to his advantage. And he just appears and, bam, just lays Luffy's ass out. Luffy then goes and, and comes from out of nowhere behind, like, this big crate and goes right through the crate with a Gatling gun, just, you know? And uh, so really excellent stuff, really cool stuff. 
And we wind up seeing um, a, a brief check-in, too, which I thought was great. Uh, well, with, with several other people, we know that the buster call has been triggered now. So you see uh, some of the people on the island, obviously, the government officials, as well as the Frankie family, you know, just some of the dock worker guys, all them. And they're all like, whoa, whoa shit, you know, this is bad, right? The buster call's on its way. So we wind up getting this check-in, of course, with uh, <laughs> with Zorro and, uh, and and our, our good friend, the uh, the Sniper King. And I love this because it's just a quick couple of panels where they're next to each other. And... <laughs> And Zoro, last time we saw him, had had went and placed Sniper King in this position and have him has him holding one of his three swords. And I love this because he goes, I've got it. Your name is No Storm, the Killer Blade. <laughs> Get, and Usopp, or the Sniper King, goes and he's like, this is no time to be thinking of good names. And then he's just like, Chopper! <laughs> and then it segues into Chopper, who you see is still like just, just this crazed beast and he's climbing up the side of the, the Tower of Law, you know. So anyway, as the chapter winds up progressing, we then go and move on to um, we move on to the battle between Khalifa and Nami, and it was uh, revealed, I think, in the last chapter or the chapter before that Khalifa has the power of the bubble bubble fruit, so she's able to go and use a number of different techniques uh, that are all related to kind of cleanliness, hygienic, and cleaning stuff with bubbles. Uh, one of them is which this golden bubbles technique is what she used on Sanji and then on Nami's legs. And that's obviously what makes them, uh, you know, smooth and, I don't know, there's there's no pores anymore on her skin. And it's basically smooth and has like this glass-like complexion. Um, but the whole thing about it that people don't realize is that uh, people, uh, humans, our imperfections are what makes us human. It's what makes us unique, you know. Um, I, obviously, a lot of people, you'd say, well, that'd be great if I could have this or I could do that. But... Uh, nobody wants to not have any pores whatsoever, you know. Pores are there so you can sweat, <laughs> you know. So and cooling body can cool itself off and whatnot when it's overheated. But anyway, as they as their fight rages on, uh, Khalifa goes and obviously Nami's uh, impaired as it is because her legs have have. have the golden bubbles technique has been used on her legs. Khalifa winds up going and saying, listen, you know, uh, I'm going to have to end this now because we got to get out of here. She knows obviously that the buster call is coming. So she does, I'm assuming her shave technique disappears, reappears behind Nami and then goes and basically wraps her arms around her. And actually it was done in a very, uh, in a very kind of sexy like pose too. <laughs> Where are you going? It's like, uh, that, that's like some soft core porn there, fellas. Uh, you know, ladies, gentlemen, I mean, again, I'm not judging. But, uh, but just the way that they're kind of wrapped and pulled and held and holding each other, it looks like. But Khalifa is, uh, is using her golden bubbles technique and winds up using it on all of Nami's body, right? And then she's like, okay, that's it, you know, and now you're done and blah, blah, blah. And she goes to nail Nami with, uh, with a Tempest kick, right? And uh, I think it's a Tempest kick. It's some move, you know. And it winds up being that Nami actually used her baton, the, the climb attack, uh, to actually go and create a, a clone of herself. If you remember back in Alabaster, that was something that she could do, project an image of herself that's not really there. So Khalifa winds up going through a couple of different, you know, things and tries a finger pistol on what she thinks is Nami. And two or three times she's, she's tricked by Nami, right? And Nami's obviously hiding somewhere, probably trying to figure out because her strength. Khalifa explains that when you have these, you know, smooth pores and everything else, Basically, your strength is halved as well, so obviously it impairs you. I don't know if the effect is reversible or if it wears off after a while. Well, <laughs> it'll remain to be seen because Sanji looks like a fucking porcelain doll too, right? And uh, so anyway, the chapter, though, winds up ending, which I thought this was great, with Chopper's big ass just <laughs> just crashing through the wall. And here I wound up even bookmarking the, uh, <laughs> the page so I didn't have to go and look and turn to it. Just a beautifully done double page spread or, or almost full two page, page spread where he's just smashes through the wall, right? And then Khalifa's over there. And then what I love about this is Khalifa goes... <laughs> Khalifa's like, she's supersized, so she has powers too. <laughs> and then Nami's like, what a dit, standing behind her, you know? So Khalifa thinks that this is Nami, that Nami went and disappeared, and that Nami has some kind of power to turn into some kind of hulking, like half man, half reindeer, part fucking yeti, you know, beast. This looks like if King Kong... And like, I don't know, some other sort of weird mythical monster, like a creature from the Black Lagoon or something like that, like had, you know, physical sexual relations. This like this thing is what they would have shit out. So <laughs> anyway, I thought it was pretty funny, though. All in all, very, very good chapter. So and a great way to start off the, uh, uh, the volume. So uh, that's where the chapter leaves off. And my question, my chapter question for you, brothers and sisters, is really what are your thoughts on Chopper and this kind of huge sort of menacing, mindless beast uh, form that he has? Obviously, there's the advantages to it of it just being this unstoppable killing machine that can pretty much help you get through things. But since you can't direct it and you can't and it can't differentiate, you know, hurting friends from foes, 
it's obviously a, a, a very, very tricky double-edged sword, I guess you would call it. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts are and your answer to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. Remember to subscribe to my other channels and follow me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram too.